Okay, so welcome back. We're going to be finishing up P4 today. So today's part is going to be P4, complex fractions and negative exponents. So just by the title of it, it is going to be a pretty heavy lesson, so please be ready for it. Negative exponents. So what we mean by complex fractions and negative exponents is that for a complex fraction, we're actually going to have fractions in both the numerator and the denominator. For negative exponents, it's kind of self-explanatory, we're going to be dealing with negative exponents, but in the context of rational expressions. So there's going to be some factoring out involved, which makes things a little more complicated. So first off, let's go ahead and divide our page into our three columns. Leave yourself plenty of room for the middle space. Of course, as always, we have problems and questions. We have our work. And we have our steps. Okay, so the first thing that I want to make sure that you guys write down is that a complex fraction that complex fractions have fractions in their numerator and their denominator. So really it's like a fraction and a fraction on top of a fraction and it's going to look a bit messy and our goal is to simplify it to reduce it into one fraction. So our first example is going to be a squared plus one half all over two over a plus a squared over two. Okay, so just looking at this, I know that I really want to get rid of all the fractions that I have in there so that I can start reducing it and simplifying it further. The only way I can do that is to combine fractions just like we learned yesterday. So we're going to have to combine fractions up here as well as down here. Let me switch off the light, see if it's a little clear. So looking here, the only denominator I have is the 2. So I know that I actually need to multiply the a squared by 2 over 2. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to show the work a little more clearly. Down here, we have two different denominators. We have a and we have 2. What we realize is that our lowest common denominator is actually 2a. So for this one, I'm going to have to multiply by a over a, and this one by 2 over 2. Let's go ahead and rewrite our fraction now. So up on top in the numerator, we have 2a squared over 2 plus 1 over 2. That's going to all be over 4 over 2a plus a cubed over 2a. So we have our common denominators now, which means we can add our numerators, just like you guys did. So let's go ahead and simplify that. I have 2a squared plus 1 all over 2. And then we have 4 plus a cubed all over 2a. So at this point, we really can't simplify any further. The only thing is to do is recognize, hey, we actually have a division problem. So we have a fraction on top divided by a fraction on the bottom. We worked with this uh, about two lessons ago, and we know that we're going to have to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up now. I have 2a squared plus 1 over 2 multiplied by the reciprocal. So it's now going to be 2a on top, and then 4 plus a cubed on the bottom. Because we're multiplying, this can all be regarded as one whole term. If you'd like to rewrite it, feel free to do so. So we have 2a times 2a squared plus 1. I choose not to multiply at the beginning because it makes simplifying a lot easier because we would end up factoring stuff out anyway. 
I'm going to rewrite this as aq plus 4 to set powers descending. At this point, we're looking for something that we can cross out, simplify further. The only thing I see is our 2. Okay, so at this point, actually, I want to see this. Nope, I'm good. So we canceled out the 2, and we end up with a times 2a squared plus 1 all over a cubed plus 4. I could distribute the a and get 2a cubed plus a, but really that does nothing to simplify it any further, so I can actually just stop here. This is as simplified as it will get, and it's way better than the fraction we began with in the first place. So this will be my final answer for number one. Okay, so that's how you're going to deal with complex fractions. Your goal is to combine fractions first, and then basically you're dividing fractions or multiplying by the reciprocal. All right, let's go ahead and move on to negative exponents now. For me, I'm going to have to turn the page. And let's go ahead and start right here. So, again, three columns. For me, steps are going to be very important for this section because they are so complicated. So now we have complex, or not complex, sorry. We have negative fractions, exponents. Okay, so negative exponents. And we're going to be dealing with expressions that have negative exponents. Our goal is to look for something called the lesser exponent. We already know how numbers fall on the number line, and this is pretty much the same concept. If we have the exponent negative 3 halves versus negative 5 halves, negative 5 halves would be the lesser exponent because it's more negative. It's further away from 0. Okay, So that's one way to think of it. You can also think of it as the fact that well, actually, no. I would keep it at that. Okay, so lesser exponent, just look for the one that is the more negative number. So for our example, we're going to have 3y squared times 8 minus 5y to the negative 3 halves plus 8y squared 8 minus 5y to the negative 1 half. Our goal for this problem is actually to simplify it so that we don't end up with addition anymore. We're trying to add these two together and simplify it into one big term, if possible. What I need to look for are my common factors. So I need to begin by factoring. I notice immediately that they both have a y squared that I can factor out. So I know for sure that part of my factor will be y squared. The other thing I notice is that they also share an 8 minus 5y. The difference is they have very different exponents. However, I can still factor them out. In this case, the negative 3 halves exponent is the lesser exponent. And you're going to see how when I pull this guy out, this one is also changed just a bit. So let's go ahead and take that step now. I'm going to factor out the y squared. I'm also going to take out the 8 minus 5y to the negative 3 halves. And this leaves me with a very long bracket inside. This whole factor taken away from this guy, or divided from this guy, leaves us with 3 as our term. Plus, over here, the y squared is gone, but the 8 is still left over. And we still actually have an 8 minus 5y. But what power it is, is it? We have to check. Originally, it was negative 1 half. When you divide out a factor, you're technically dividing. So if you're dividing exponents, you're actually subtracting. So we're going to be subtracting that 3 halves that we pulled out, which, because it's a double negative, ends up being addition. 3 halves plus a negative 1 half is going to give us 1 whole. So let's go ahead and rewrite that to make sure that we understand that. y squared 8 minus 5y 
negative 3 halves bracket 3 plus 8 parentheses 8 minus 5y to the power of 1 so I don't need to write it out okay from here we get to simplify we know by now that anything with a negative exponent will end up flipping to the other place in this case everything is inside on top or in the numerator which means we have to move our 8 minus 5y the whole quantity to our denominator because of that negative exponent so I'm going to start by writing my numerator first whatever is left over y squared bracket 3 plus 8 times 8 minus 5y okay this is all going to be over the only term that had a negative exponent 8 minus 5y to the negative 3 halves except now it's going to be a positive exponent because we moved it okay at this point it looks like we're done however I'm just going to go ahead and distribute everything and make sure I collect like terms at the top to make sure that there's nothing else that I could factor out so let me move back over here I have y squared simplifying on the inside I get 3 plus 64 minus 40y this is all over 8 minus 5y to the 3 halves still then I'm gonna collect like terms and also distribute the y half or y to the second power so that's gonna be 67 y squared minus 40y cubed all over 8 minus 5y to the 3 halves power okay honestly at this point it doesn't look like there's going to be any factors that cancel each other out so this is as simple as we can get so I'm gonna call this my final answer and that's pretty much how you work with negative exponents so go ahead click the Google Forms link right now and see if you can answer the questions that Mr. Yang has for you have a good day stay out of the heat